today's scripture lesson comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Listen for the story from the ministry of our Lord. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all, and his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. May the Lord add blessings to the reading of the word, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This story from the Gospel of Matthew is an interesting story in the ministry of our Lord. Jesus has crossed a boundary line, a line between Israel and the Canaanite people. And he is being confronted by a Canaanite woman, one that by all rights and by law, he should have no contact with. Jesus knows that rule well. As a matter of fact, he articulates it in this passage. Do you think I came for you? No, I came for the children of Israel. And yet, she continues to beg him. She refuses to allow Jesus not to be her Savior and her Lord. She describes him as such. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, she was not a child of Israel. David had not been the king of her people. As a matter of fact, David had been in conflict with her people. There are many stories of how David fought with the Canaanites, the Philistines as they were called in his day. There are many stories of how over the years, millennium, there had been conflict between these two people. And now in Jesus' day, for a Israelite man to have contact with a Canaanite woman made him unclean. So it's no wonder that Jesus answers her the way he does. He's been taught well. He is a product, after all, of his own upbringing, his own learning. Dr. Kimberly Long says that this is a transformational moment in Jesus' ministry and in Jesus' own mind. Jesus has thought, I have come to be the Lord and Savior of the house of Israel. And yet this Canaanite woman comes to him begging for help for her young daughter. And Jesus takes pity on her. And he says to her, your faith has made your daughter well. Now there's a problem with that. Because we've all heard people say, well, if you just have enough faith, you'll be healed. If you just have enough faith, nothing bad will ever happen to you. If you just have enough faith, you will not get this virus. The Lord will protect you. But we know by experience that that is not true. That good people get sick and suffer and die, as well as evil people. 
And so we don't have some kind of magic coating around us that protects us from the world as some would like to suppose. And yet, Jesus comes crossing boundaries that we cannot imagine. The disciples are put out with her. She keeps calling after us, bothering us. Tell her to go away. And at first, Jesus does exactly that. But then, he asks her a question. Is it right to take the food that was meant for the children and give it to a dog? A dog. That was the name that the Jewish people used for anyone who wasn't Jewish. A Gentile. They were all considered somewhat less than human. And yet here comes Jesus asking this question. And the woman responds, even a dog gets the crumbs that are dropped from the table. Surely there is enough mercy and forgiveness in this God you claim as Father Jesus to heal my daughter. Surely if your God can heal all of these folks, your God can heal my young daughter. Matthew tells his story for his own church's sake so that they will know that there are none who are excluded from the kingdom. You see, Matthew's church has a problem. They thought they were to be witnesses to the people of Israel. And yet they keep getting Gentiles coming into the church saying that they too love the Lord. They too have been redeemed by Jesus, the Nazarene. And so, here we are today. This day that we celebrate in the life of the church as the beginning of a new academic school year. We have young people in our congregation who will be going to elementary school and to high school and to colleges. You know, back when we Presbyterians first got started, John Calvin was pastoring the church in Geneva. And at one time, the entire session of that church made up the entirety of the city council of Geneva. And some of the things that they did as a church session and as a city council was they raised public money to do two things. One was to put in a sewer system because the people of Geneva were getting sick from the unsanitary conditions. And the other was to start public education for all of the children of Geneva. Is it any wonder that we Presbyterians have been at the forefront of public education in this country. And in fact, we have started numerous colleges and universities. Some of the first universities ever established here were established by Presbyterians. And so on this day, we recognize the need for us to be involved too in the public discourse, particularly this year, about how our children can learn, how they can be safe, how they can be spared from this virus, and yet how they can continue their education. My prayer for our, us as a people in this nation and around the world is that God will give us creative imaginations and that we will be able to cross the boundaries between what makes sense and what doesn't. Between what is safe, and what is good, and what is best for our children. And that we will act with patience and understanding of our civic and public leaders, 
our educators, our administrators, as we figure this thing out together so that our children can learn and have a good school year. And so we come asking God's blessing on this school year. Let us pray. God, we ask that you would bless us as your people, that we would be faithful to your call, and that we would be willing to reach out beyond what is safe and secure to boundaries that we can't imagine so that we might be your faithful people. For Christ's sake, amen. For our dedication of the offering, we've come out to the McDowell Academy for Innovation. This is one of the places where we have given mission dollars and supported their work and their efforts to help students. Let us pray. God, we ask you to bless us as a congregation as we continue to find places for us to be in mission and ministry, even in our school system and around our community. We ask you to bless the gifts that are given, that they might be used in accordance with your will and might benefit those who have great need. For it's in the name of Christ we ask it. Amen. God, we commit ourselves to study and learning in the school year ahead. We live with a lot of uncertainty as we face this year. Help us when we become stressed by tests and homework and we wonder how we will make it through. We long for a normal school year, but we know that this year will be different. Grant us confidence, calm, and courage as we learn. Help us to ask for help when we feel overwhelmed and keep us safe and healthy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, may we teachers be sustained this year by your love and blessings. Give us your patience as we face the challenges of living in a COVID world. Make us imaginative as we learn new ways to teach. Keep us safe and healthy. Help us to be reminded that congregation embraces our call to teaching and learning. May we feel sustained by their prayers and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we send our children into this new school year. We worry about their health and safety. We want them to have a normal school year. Yet, we know in the world of COVID, that may not be possible. We commit them to you, trusting that you will care for them as a loving parent and keep them safe. Bless all of our children, that they may grow in statue, mind and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of all our growing years, you have created us with the desire to learn and grow in knowledge and understanding of our world and of ourselves. In every age, under every circumstance, you have called out educators who have ways to enable that learning. So today we pray for teachers and administrators, sustain their passion and their energy for teaching in these unique and challenging days. We pray for students whose first lesson is in adaptation to an unexpected world. We pray for families who must let those they have cared for and protected go now into an uncertain world. Remind us all that you go with us and hold us by your mighty hand. We pray in the name of Jesus our Lord, whom we seek to follow day by day. Amen.
Now, as we move into an uncertain school year, may the Lord go with us, may the Lord bless us, and may the Lord keep us, and all of those we love. Amen.